All right, so thanks everybody for coming. I always do an introduction to this because since I record everything and I post those videos online, we never know who actually knows what these meetings are all about. Thanks for taking the time and coming join us. Uh, so do a quick, uh, you know, what's, uh, what are these meetings all about? Essentially best ways uh, to become a better rider. What are those best ways? I guess first is just, you know, going to the track and riding there. You know, seat time at the track as opposed to trying things out on the street. That would be the best way to become a better rider. Second to that, I guess, you know, working with coaches, instructors, listen to what they have to say in class, go to the track, have them follow you, come off track, listen to their feedback. They're gonna tell you things that you don't even realize that you are doing right or wrong. So make use of that if you're riding with an organization that has coaches and instructors. Third, what you do beyond the track, right? You are not at the track, you are not you know, on the track, you are here doing this kind of stuff. So you know, analyzing your footage, how do you do that? Analyzing track maps, sitting on your bike, watching videos to learn the line at a track that you're gonna be going to, going to your garage, putting your bike on the stands, practicing body position, practicing getting to the flow of, you know, you have to put your warmers on, so what should you do? Tire pressure, you know, clean up your, um, your tires, put the, the warmers, put on the stand, blah, blah. I, I'm crazy about those things. I practice all those things here so that when I get here, I don't waste, waste time on that. Because ever since I started running tire, uh, tire warmers, holy crap, man, I get really tired because there's so many things to remember because now I'm also like taking notes of my tire pressure, my tire temperature when I'm going out, when I'm coming in so they can analyze that and say, okay, am I doing things right? Do I need to drop a pound on the air because I'm not putting enough heat into the tires? There's so many things, it overwhelms me. So if I don't practice that back home, when I'm at the track, <coughs> I just want to go and ride. Well, there's more to it. Just going out and riding, that's not going to make you a better rider, right? You have to know what are you going to be trying to do on the track. When you come out, okay, what did I try to do? How did it feel? Am I coming out, you know, too slow or too quick or this, that, or the other? Am I going offline? Write it down so that next time out, you can actually practice and then become better, right? So this is what these meetings are all about. Agenda for today, we're not gonna be doing uh, intro to track days. I think everybody here has written at the track already. Um, but if you want to recommend to other people who may be considering intro to track days, go to my channel, Three Lab Rider. There is a Beyond the Track playlist with videos for all the meetings that we've done here. The very first one was all about an intro to track day. So you can point people out to that link, to that video, so that you can see what our track day is all about. We talked about that extensively on the first meetup. Um, for today, we have been having people uh, here, our Beyond the Track attendees, talking about you know racing. What does it take to go racing? What's the big deal about? How do we prepare for it? Uh, should I do it? Is it for me or not? I don't know. My own experience, I haven't had like the need yet to go racing because again, see why I'm actually comfortable with what I'm doing, I don't expand on it. So it's like, I'm still uncomfortable with certain, say, core principles. Like sometimes I'm messing, downshifting when I'm approaching heavy braking corners. I don't wanna have that happening in a racing situation, right? I wanna get those out of the way first. Like last time out at MSRH, I ran off track three times on the very same spot because of that. One time, false neutral. Next time, I'm coming in too hot, I just let go, go out and then come back. Because I'm still thinking, oh, okay, should I downshift before the kink or after the kink? Still thinking too much on the basics. So that's me, right? I wanna be comfortable that I'm not doing those things before I think about going racing. And then on the same token, sometimes I'm riding say MSRH for instance, and I see there are two situations. One, I get past, for instance, on the outside, and it just feels sketchy. It's like, okay, I'm getting past, that's all good, but man, what is that guy doing? Just to see the guy like running off the track right in front of you. It's like, dude, what are you doing? On the other end, on the other hand, sometimes I'm going, doing my thing, and then there's somebody that goes around, it's like, like butter, right? You don't even notice, it's like a little, like, wow, that's pretty cool. Usually, 
those situations, right, a situation like this, there is an explanation, <laughs> right? The guy has been racing. Or they're on a 300, like right? Jason. And like Jason. <laughs> yeah. So here, yeah, this is sugar and spice at uh, MSRH. <clears throat> so several months ago, this guy did this pass on me, and it was smooth, like, man, I didn't feel like startled, it was just perfect. Jason pulled one like that on me, what, like two or three yeah. track days ago? Same thing, just going around, I'm doing my thing, he's doing his thing, and no big deal. So it's like, well, thinking from that angle, you know, I don't think I'd be comfortable going around somebody at that corner like that. Right now, I don't feel comfortable doing that. It's like, I, I don't think I'm skilled to do that just yet. I would go around like on a keyhole, you know, a carousel, it's wide enough, it's like, yeah, I think I, I can handle that. I, I actually can, I've done that. But here, nah. So something like that, if going racing is gonna help me with this kind of situation, well, maybe there's something there uh, for me as well. So this is why when uh, people started asking on our close group on Facebook about racing and uh, you know what does it take to get the license and what do you learn and what should you know, uh, I said, well, I don't know, but I know people who do, right? And then chatting with uh, Jason, I said, well, let's do this thing that we're doing here today, right? So without, without further ado, I'll just turn it over to Jason, who right, set up, you. you know, the content, brought, you know, the, the fellow racers to help yeah. us out. Dean and Steve, out. they're going to do part yeah. two. That is pretty awesome. Thanks again for setting that part. Yeah, thank you. We won't be doing it as professional as you just did. <laughs> you have the content, you have the information, man. That's what yeah, you're looking for. Foul language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all good. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Shaheen. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, I'm assuming that you all have an interest in racing or just a curiosity or maybe a star or just want to know what's it about, how do I, I start, you know, where, where do you begin, what can I expect. <clears throat> so. The purpose of, of today's uh, uh, topic is, number one is to dispel myths, misconceptions that you may have about racing, like I did when I first thought about racing. I was apprehensive, just like Claudio, I was in your exact same spot last year. You know, I'm not ready, I don't know about this, you know, I've seen some of these guys, and man, those passes are close. Um, so let me start by just giving you a little bit of background and my story, and then we'll go into some of the best practices and what to expect as you start to race. So I've only been riding for about five years. I, I came very late into the sport. I had a midlife crisis in my 40s, went through a nasty divorce, and I said, screw it, I'm getting a motorcycle. I have no idea how to ride one. I just jumped on and figured out the clutch. What did you get? It was a TW200. Okay, yeah, nice. Oh, those yeah. are so cool. <laughs> but then it had the milk crates. Yeah, in the back exactly. With the those big knobby tires. tires. Yeah. <laughs> that's good so, that? and that's what the guy told me at the store. Because I said, "Yeah, I want to buy a Harley." You know, and he's like, "Wait a minute, have you ridden a motorcycle before?" I said, "No." He's like, come over here. Let me steer you oh, into a beginner bike. Someone with scruples, you found. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so then uh, I started doing track days, again by accident, wasn't planning on it. A buddy of mine said, hey, just come out to the track. I've never been to a track for anything, cars or you know, motorsports or anything. So went out, got hooked, loved it. I said, this is awesome. So fast forward to today, uh, I now have my provisional race license. Uh, hopefully by next weekend I'll have my full license because I still have a couple of requirements to talk about that here uh, in a minute um, but really you know I just want to get the message across that it's it's not as daunting or as hard as you may think it is um, look, I'm getting ahead of myself so let me just jump into our agenda so uh, Claudia showed this earlier talk about the myths misconceptions that I had and that you may have and with the group that we have here tonight you know this is all about Q&A so stop us at any time and we'll, we'll go into a, a specific topic. Uh, we'll look at the requirements for you and your bike. So with racing, it's a lot stricter than your typical track day. Right? There are a lot of things that you haven't thought about uh, that you can get away with on a track day that you couldn't do during racing, so we'll look at that. Uh, we'll look at the upcoming 
There's a Ride Smart licensing school this Friday, this Saturday. I think it's Are they gonna do canceled. It? No, I think they didn't have enough signups. Oh, shoot, okay. Yeah. All right, well, that's fine. There, there is another one uh, Friday the 26th, so in two weeks, with the CMRA event. And I'll, I've got a flyer here that I'll show you. Uh, and then I'll show you my first race video from uh, kind of the beginning of, of what to expect, your sighting lap, gridding up, the lights going off, and then just all hell breaking loose. So uh, we'll look at that. Okay, so let's start with the myths. For me, right, when I looked at this last year, my buddy Marcelo, who also uh, does endurance races, and, and Steve and Dean, you may know him, uh, he was telling me, Jason, man, you got a, a race, it's just so much fun, you know, it's not like, a, uh, you know, anything different than what you're doing now, it's just, you know, a different experience, and, you know, he, he convinced me, and I said, all right, but I'm going to start with a small bike, so I got an R3, a little Yamaha R3, uh, I got it used for like $2,800, super cheap, you probably pay that for a, a custom exhausted tune on a leader bike. Put some rear sets on it, you know, the race fairings, uh, and, and that's what I said, this will be my race bike. This is what I'm gonna start in. So I did that last fall, preparing everything to start this year. So in 2018, I did the class in February, the school. Yeah, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and, and I kept telling him, you know, Marcelo, I'm not fast enough, you know, I'm level two. Until recently, I was a level two guy, and I've been a level two guy for years at Brightsmart. I just, you know, wasn't interested in being in a hurry to jump into level three, and you know, I was I was in my comfort zone. He says, "Yeah, but it's not just about being fast. You know, it's about knowing the lines, and you know, being able to uh, pass. You know, inside, outside. There are a lot of things that you can do, and that you should learn to do in racing that you're probably not getting exposed to." in your typical track day. So this was one of my biggest fears, right? I'm gonna be the slowest guy out there, you know, I'm gonna get lapped, they're gonna black flag me, but I said, you know what? I'm just gonna try, what's, what's the worst that can happen? You know, I'll come in last place and so what? Um, so false, you do not have to be a level three rider, no matter what ride smart instructors may tell you, and they have told me because I remember asking, I said, uh, what is it, am I ready to race? He's like, no, you gotta wait till you're, you're level three at least. Uh, so that's false, and I can tell you because of my own experience. No, that's Whatever. odd, because they've been doing the, the CMRE license for level two riders, at least this year I've been seeing. Sure, and, and it varies by instructor. So some instructors, okay. like Brian Evans, will say you can race in level two, even 1.5. Uh, okay. Others, other instructors will say, no, you gotta wait, you know, you gotta be the fastest guy in the group, and so you have to take that with a grain of salt. Gotcha. To Which me, it was... one very fast when they were racing. Possibly, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, to me, it was kind of a leap of faith, but I figured, you know, I'll try it, and if it doesn't work out, I've got nothing to lose. You know? sure. I'll have a, a nice little uh, lightweight bike that I, can, that I can use on track days. Uh, and track experience, believe it or not, is not even recommended. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not even required. It's recommended, right. but you don't have to be an avid track day rider to go race. Yeah. Dean and Steve, you guys. You just gotta go. pass the test. Yeah. So you gotta do. You have to pass the test and do the mock race. That's it. Okay. I have a buddy in California, Sergio, uh, about two years ago before I got into racing. Uh, he told me, hey, I'm gonna go racing this weekend. And I knew that he had never done a track day before. He was just a street rider. And I said, wait a minute, you, have, you haven't even done a track day yet, and you're gonna jump into racing. He said, oh yeah, my buddy from work is, is going, and I'm gonna go. And I said, all right, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be praying for you. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, he the next day he came back and says, oh, I had a blast, it was awesome. So never done a track day, street riding only, and he had fun racing, so. And if you're worried about passing your test, I don't think anybody's actually failed the test. <laughs> Yeah. That's the written test. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. That's just the if you test. fall down in the mock race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you just don't yeah. get to pass your test that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, to give you an example of the, the, the range of what you can expect on one single mm -hmm. race, 
right? So this is me right here. Hey, Cynthia. Hey. Uh, so let's see if I can get my pointer. So you're not last place then? Uh, I was not last place. There we go. So I'm right here, but I wanted to show you the range. So two, this is at MSRH. So 209 and 143 by J New. I'm basically the same type of bike, right? Wow. This is all the, the uh, ultra lightweights. J Newton's really fast. He is insanely fast. He's faster than most leader bike uh, racers. Yeah, he is. Yeah, wow. he is in, if anybody doesn't know, he actually is in Moto America. He finished, I think, third in the uh, Liquid Molly Cup. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I didn't even down. know you could go that oh. fast around an MSRH on a 300. That's yeah. Yeah. that's impressive. <laughs> well, yeah, that no brakes are required. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those twenty. It makes the difference. It's probably got the kitchen <laughs> sink in it too. Yeah. So if you are doing anywhere around between 209 and 143, you would be competitive. On a right? 300. And you would have fun on a 300 or on any bike. Now on the leader bikes, the, the times, the best times drop to like in the 30s, the mid 30s. But the high times, they're not going to vary too much from this either. You know, they'll be in the high 150s, high uh, you know 150, uh, uh, 140s. So I suppose there's a category or a class for 600 bikes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, if you if you look at those times there, it doesn't matter how fast you are, you will have somebody to race with. Exactly. Right. That's what that so, explains to you. Gotcha. Right, so even if you're not racing for the lead, I don't give a, I don't know, being recorded, I don't, give, it. It. I don't oh. give a shit. There that, you, you go. Know, but you're racing for 12, guess what? There's only one Still person fun, you want to yeah. beat, and that's the <laughs> wall right in front of you. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. a race is a race. It doesn't matter what you're racing, it hmm. doesn't matter what position you're in. It's still the same thing. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. And, and just the experience of when you grid up, and you'll see this in the video, the adrenaline rush, you know, it was my first time out, and I'm sure, Steve, you probably feel some adrenaline when you're gritting up uh, for, and you've probably done this for a long time. Uh, there's nothing like it. You know, I don't get that feeling in the track bit. I still get a little bit of, of anxiety because, you know, it's, nervous. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was a different kind of a, a rush, you know, to hmm. be there on the starting line and hearing all those engines rev and seeing yeah. the lights and then they go off and boom, everybody's, you know, gunning for that, that spot. Yeah, and there's nothing like it. I, I, I got lapped on my first race at TWS. Okay. And that's probably the most excited I've been at the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> just to have finished, just to see the check. Somebody's waving the checkers at you, for real. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're taking the check. I got lapped. Yeah. And uh, I was yeah. just excited to cross the line. Actually cross it. Instead but of... But they're good enough. Yeah. The yeah. The revs go There's off. There's nothing like it. The lights go off. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, and the other goal I had was not to crash. And you'll see why, if it's part of the requirements, you can't crash when you're a provisional novice. So, met those goals, and hopefully here in a week, I'll uh, finish my uh, remaining two races, and corner working, and then I'm done, I'll get my license, and uh, met all the requirements. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the other myth that, that I had in my mind is that it wasn't safe. And again, when talking with other people, they think, well, racing is super dangerous, you know, crash all the time and in my experience it's no safer than a track day in fact I would say because of all the strict requirements that they have uh, and, and at the end of tonight maybe we can go see your bike Dean and you can show them all the safety wiring uh, which by the way I've got a picture of it right there that's my bike that's the axle when has anybody asked you on a track day to safety wire your axle nut hmm. never no, never gonna look at that so in some regards, racing is safer just because of the, the high bar that they set for safety uh, than a track day. Now, yeah, people crash, and yes, you're going to get passed closer than ever before, but, you know, it's, it's, again, a different perspective on the sport. But again, in my opinion, no more dangerous than what we do on a track day. I've seen people get horribly hurt on a track day at MSRH or at CODA. And I've seen, seen people get hurt on a, on a race, you know, so. I would think in general it's probably, I, I feel safer at race day than track day. Because <laughs> there is some level of more skill. Yeah. Skill. yeah. I mean, That's a good like, point. Like Dean's point, if you're racing for 12, you're racing that guy for the majority of that race. 
So there's no, there's no, you don't get mixed up on the track. Once that first lap's out of the way, until mm -hmm. the fast guys come around and catch you on the fifth lap, <laughs> right. you, you tend to be in, in equally skilled riders. So right. mm -hmm. once that first lap's out of the way, and so you don't get the mix that you do with skill levels that you do on the track guys. Yep. Most folks know that. Know who you're yeah, riding that's with. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there is one thing here, let me just come back to this. Notice in my picture I'm wearing that yellow shirt. That tells the world and every racer on the grid that I'm the new guy. <laughs> Cut me a little slack you know, instead of passing me with only six inches, maybe give me you know, a couple of feet. Uh, so that's called the yellow shirt and all provisional novices have to wear that until you meet all of your requirements. So anytime you see pictures of racers and they're wearing some jersey of some kind, you know, other clubs may have another color or some other uh, signal. Uh, this is to basically tell everybody else, hey, this person's new. They may be an expert, you know, super advanced racer that's coming from another country, sure. or it may be their first time out on the track. Uh, but to Steve's point, it, it, I think it is safer because, you know, the lines are predictable. Unless you're wearing a yellow shirt, you're pulling another novice or an expert, they know what they're doing. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other myth or misconception that I had was around cost. You know, so I kept thinking, well, you know, I hear about these guys that race, they buy a new set of tires, you know, for every sprint, you know, that's 350, 400 bucks for a set of slicks, you know, the, the good kind. Uh, and then plus the uh, all the maintenance and, and the travel, you have to go to Hallett and Louisiana. And, um, but I found, you know, by me picking the R3 to start, it's no more expensive than a track day. So when I did my two races, and I didn't even do the practice, it was $145, which included the rental of a transponder. So it was cheaper than a track day. Now, uh, some people may choose to do eight races or 10 races are gonna spend a little bit more. Uh, in my case, I just wanted to get my two races done and then next weekend I'll do two and I'll be done. Next season I'll probably join maybe three or four, maybe five races. Uh, but, you know, it's not gonna break the bank unless you allow that. Now some people, the expert racers, will spend thousands on the best equipment. They have mechanics that they bring, you know, they've had these huge trailers with five different bikes for every class, you know, they, they take it to a whole other level. They yeah, spend tens of thousands. Surgeons and, uh, mm -hmm. what is it, real estate moles. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know which team you're talking about. The, uh, yep, yep, you know. It's just like, you know, but at the end of the day, not to steal to jump in, but no, no, please. It's, uh, it's club racing, right? You can take it really seriously. Some people, in my opinion, take it too seriously. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. I have to go race and I have to come home and I have to go to work on Monday. Right, right, you know, yeah. so there's yeah. no point in getting pissed off and upset and all that nonsense. If you're not having a good time, you shouldn't be doing it. Correct. And like I said, just, you know, I got a little bit off, uh, off track there, but you can take it very seriously. You can spend far too much money or right. you can take the approach that you did that. Yes. Yep. Where, where mm -hmm. are the sayings? And, and on the topic of uh, costs and tires, I'll tell you that the, uh, for the R3, I bought these Dunlop Q3 Pluses at the beginning of the season, back in February. Nine track days later, in two sprints, the tires are st still look like new. So, some people may choose to use brand new rubber on every race. Others, especially the smaller bikes, you can do an entire season on the same set of tires. Now that changes with the leader bikes. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, I wanted to start, you know, just at the very bottom and learn, and eventually I'll work my way up to the leader bike classes. But really, this has not cost me any more than doing a track day, other than the expense of the bike itself. And you don't have to like do a number of races within the season or you just... You do, and we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. I've got a, yeah, cool. got a whole section on that. Gotcha. Uh, in fact, that's a good segue. So yeah, segue. let's look at the requirements. And this is for CMRA. You know, if you go to CSS or other organizations in the West Coast or East Coast, you know, they have different requirements. But in general, uh, they, they're similar. Um, and they all come from like the Motor America and on down. Mm -hmm. So first, first thing, you have to take the licensing school, right? 
if you want to be in the part of a race on a sanctioned CMRA event, you have to take the school either to Ride Smart, which Randy Joy will usually do, right. or on a Friday of a CMRA event. That's when they do the licensing school. Now they have a new thing this year called the Track Experience. And let me just uh, diverge a little bit here and show you that. Uh, so for $150, you can do the school and you get to enter into the mock race without having your bike fully race prepped. So that's the big change. Before, if you wanted to do the licensing school and the mock race within a CMRA sanctioned event, you had to have your oil plug safety wired, your axle nuts safety wired, your uh, coolant uh, uh, reservoir if you have one uh, safety wired. You know, all the things that are in the rule book you had to, to, to match. What they're doing now is to bring in more people and to make it easier for, for riders to experience what it's like to race. They're lowering the bar a little bit, still keeping things safe, uh, but pay attention to this part here. So just tape up your mirrors, be sure your drain plug is tight, not safety wired, uh, and good tires. And that's it. No different than a track day. Yeah. On, on a full race, once you actually go and you want to start racing, they are going to require that your bike is safety wired and that your helmet is no older than five years. And I learned that the hard way when I did my, my licensing school. Before the track experience, everything had to be safety wired. And they were inspecting my helmet, and I thought, why are they inspecting my helmet? You know, they don't do that at a track day. They were looking for a manufacturing date. I didn't even know helmets came with a date or that they even expired, you know, like old yeah. milk. Peel back the wine. I had no idea, yeah. And he says, hey, this is from uh, 2010. And I said, so? It's only more than six months ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the other exactly. Thing. Yeah. And I, I, I said, uh, yeah, I got it online, you know, a couple years ago. And he's like, well, it's probably been sitting in the shelf for eight years, and we can't let you race like that. Not even for the mock race. This was part of the school. This wasn't even a full race. This was an MSRA. So luckily, I had another helmet, like my street helmet, that was newer. So I went all the way back home, got the helmet, came back just in time. Oh, man. They inspected and it barely made the cut <laughs> within uh, like eight months. And so they let me do it. Now I've got a, a new helmet, but the, my point is the uh, requirements for you to try this out and see what it's like to be in the grid and get and the lights going off and then you just gun it for first place. You can do that now as part of what they're calling the track experience. Interesting. So this is good. So what this do you is, have to do with the number plates and everything? Do they? give you a number when you show up or how does... Great question, so let me come back over here. So, to get your provisional novice license and number plate in the blue, you have to do those two things, right? So you have to complete the licensing school and do the mock race, and then you can choose a number with CMRA or whatever club you yeah. end up racing in. Once you pass the license, they're not gonna give you enough, and you have to pay the uh, the membership fee, which I think is 140 bucks, is that right? For a year? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that gives you your, your all of the, the privileges of being a member and your, your number. Yeah. Now there are rules about the numbers, if I believe, Size. correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but obviously the number one plate uh, has to be earned Right, and that goes to the, the racer with the most points and across the different classes. Yeah, started last year where they had two number one plates, one for the top novice and one for the top expert. Yeah. So one through 10, or was that? Yeah, one through 10 have to be earned. Right. And then uh, you can get a two number, uh, two number number. Uh, and you have to, once you have that two number number, you have to do a certain, uh, number of races every season in order to keep that number. Mm -hmm. So like the, one of the guys on our endurance team, he's number 55, and he makes sure that he does at least six sprint races a year. So he can keep, he can keep, keep that. His, yeah, yeah, so he can keep his two digit number. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for, digit. Digit. Yeah. Digit. <laughs> so most people race with three numbers. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's, you know, it's okay. kids' birthdays. Or, you know, yeah. Because right. all the lucky numbers are gone. Oh, of course, yeah. nothing would be triple seven. Make it back into the pool. I have a seven-digit number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and they do expire, so every year you have to sign up, and yeah. you, you, you can lose it. You, get the, you do get plus preference to keep your number. It's, it's not a free for all. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have to redo my livery every year. Exactly. At that yeah. point. Yeah. But if you fall asleep at the switch, you do. Yeah, yeah, if you don't show up. Yeah. I just put a one on the front. Yeah, if you go to Thailand for a couple of weeks, yeah. Yeah. That didn't happen to me. So those are the two important things, right? Everything else kicks off the, the process then, once you've done your school, you've done the mock race, and you didn't crash. Because I have seen at some of the schools, at the very end of the day, they're just, you know, get very competitive and do something stupid and they crash, and guess what? You gotta do the school all over again. It's an entire day, classroom, <laughs> test. Yeah, you don't get to race that weekend. You gotta win. Nope. Exactly. <laughs> so do you do any writing when you're doing the school or is it do. strictly Absolutely. academic? Yeah. 20 minutes. And uh, Dean and Steve are going to pass around the schedule and you'll see on there the track experience. You get 20 minutes uh, just like a level one and a level two, level three in track day. Oh, okay. They do the lightweight bikes, the heavyweights, the, the school, the track experience. So everybody gets 20 minutes every hour. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, the second part. So now the clock starts ticking. This is very important. From the period that, from the date that you complete your school, you then have 12 months to meet all the other requirements in order for you to become a novice licensed racer. Right? The first two make you a provisional and you wear that yellow shirt. To get to the next level, which is what I'm trying to do, you have to complete these requirements. Number one, uh, well, to, you can race as a provisional uh, uh, novice if your bike is safety wired, you've got the transponder, which they can rent or you can buy. It's the one that they use uh, from mylaps.com. Um, you can race all you want all year in those 12 months uh, as a provisional novice. However, if you want to get your license, then you have to do the other two things, which is complete two days of corner working, Saturday, Sunday, it can be the same weekend, uh, or Friday. Uh, and you need two crash-free sprints across two different race weekends. Uh, you can also do endurance. I think it's 40 minutes uh, per each to meet the requirement, which is what Steve and Dean are going to talk about, endurance. Yeah, it's a minimum of 20 minute session for your yep. divisional novice requirement. Yep. Um, and that's it. If you complete that and you did your corner working days, then you have your, your novice license and you can take the yellow shirt off. If you don't do that, then you gotta start over. Return to step A. So in my case, I'm in a dilemma because I did the class in February thinking, I, oh, I'm gonna have plenty of time you know, to do my races and do my corner working. And of course, my work, life gets in the way. You know, I crashed uh, a couple months ago and that took me out. Um, broke my finger, it's still healing. They took pins out, but it looks like it's going to be deformed permanently, but that's okay. Um, so now I've got just this last weekend to, to do my last two races and to corner work. So it's going to be a busy weekend. So can you corner work and do race the same weekend? Is it yeah. possible? Yeah, sure. Corner yeah. work Saturday and sure. race yeah. Sunday. You've got three days, remember. Okay. You've got Friday, which is practice or the school. Saturday, you can actually do your race. And then Sunday, you could corner work. Now, back in the day, you used to be able to sub out one day. You get somebody to work for you. That's correct. You still can. We'll do that then. Yeah. Find somebody that's <laughs> a qualified person. <laughs> oh, you don't have to be qualified. I think the uh, No, don't, well, don't wash my windshield at the intersection. Get in. We'll, I, I'll actually, I'll tell you this. I know it's going to sound crazy, but I enjoyed the corner working day because oh, yeah. I had never seen that side of the track before. Uh, at MSRH, I, I just... By coincidence, they put me in the, um, what's that, uh, that one carousel is? by the bus stop, right before the bus stop. Keyhole? The horseshoe. Oh, keyhole. The keyhole. keyhole. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, they put me right there in the middle so I can see all the three corners. And I got to see the expert racers and hear, you know, how they were, they were their throttle was opening, closing, uh, the lines that they took within, you know, eight feet. And I'm stationary and I can watch them and hear them. And it was a whole different experience. I loved it. Yeah. See where they're tipping in and where they're Everything, in. right. And so I used that information, and then the next time that I went out, I went faster through there because I'd seen those guys do it. And it just boosted my confidence because they were tearing through there where otherwise I was 
riding like Miss Daisy through that <laughs> keyhole. Uh, the next time I went out, I was actually passing people on the keyhole, which was crazy. And it was just, I honestly think it was because I watched hundreds and hundreds of times, rider after rider, really fast uh, riders going through there. And if I hadn't done corner working, I, I, I wouldn't have learned that. So nice. don't look at it as much of a chore, look at it as, as a learning experience. Now, yeah, there are fire ants and mosquitoes, and it's hot, and, you know, humid, and, yeah. yeah, August. But yeah, I did mine in June. It was, it was bad. That's just better than August. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they do. They did give us RB sandwiches, which is good. Go. Lunch is included. <laughs> so don't don't let the corner days uh, scare you. Uh, I'm telling you, look at it as a, as a learning experience. Yeah, the first uh, weekend that I actually uh, go to work, I met a bloke, never met him before in my life, and with mates to this day, even though we don't see go. each other. He yeah. just moved to Germany, Moody. Yeah, he yeah. actually passed out on uh, Steve's deck when he was in Canada. So, you know, hmm. so yeah. yeah, like I say, I mean, you know, there's people from all walks of life, so even just, like you say, just work in a corner, you never know who you're going to get sat beside. Right, so, that's right. You know. yep. Yep. Any questions about the requirements? Uh, so this, is, this is very important. Steering damper required there? Steering damper is a requirement for the rule book. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep, and you can go so kind of a high dollar $500 steering damper, or you can get one for 20 bucks off eBay. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Take it on. <laughs> Zip ties. Uh, the no, the clamp yeah. ties. Yeah. What have I got mine? Fifteen dollars steering damper from the GSX. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you got like fifty bucks. A drill and a couple of bolts. Oh, you, yeah. you, you will. And that's the other thing. You'll become quite brave with your bike. And and here's the other, here's the other thing. You will no longer care about your bike being shiny. You know, oh, oh yeah. yeah. You, yeah. It's that's you so far it. in the past. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wouldn't go out unless that thing was was just tip top. Now, as long as the zip ties are tight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yep. That's right. It's right. It's tape tape fast. Because <laughs> there's about 800 on there, right? To help together. So. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'll look it up later, but I'm 99% I'm positive you need a steering you do. Yeah, you, you do. do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. 100%. And you'll get one of these when you take the class, whether it's with okay. Randy and Ride Smart or the, uh, the track experience, you'll get a little handbook. Okay. Uh, so you'll, they'll go through there, all the, the classes and you know lightweight versus heavyweight. Uh, there are so many classes. To me, it was that was the most confusing part. Okay. Is just understanding what can I race in. I have an R3. Yeah. I have rear sets, a custom exhaust, but otherwise the bike is stock. Okay. Where does that put me? And so the rule book is very specific as to what you can do to the engine, right down to the cams, right, and the boring uh, to like a super stock which is basically you can do anything you want to it except modify the engine. Mm -hmm. Super bike in Formula One, it's anything goes, right? You can put $20,000 in, in stuff on your bike, you know, knock yourself out. Okay. So all of that, they'll explain to you when you do the licensing school. Obviously, I, I, we don't have time today to do that. Uh, and Dean and, and Steve will touch on the, uh, the ultra lightweight versus the heavyweight classes, but uh, just know that there's a class for every bike made, you know? Uh -huh. It's, if it's a bike that you bought at a dealer, chances are there's a class for it. There's a class. Yeah. Whether okay. it's a Triumph, you know, your, your 675 or some Buell or, you know, some exotic bike. If it's a production motorcycle, there will be a class for it and you will be competitive. And I take, like in one race, different classes are going to be combined? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You can race up. Gotcha. Yeah. In fact, uh, let okay. me show you here. Just can't race that. That's a great question. So it's hard to see here, but ah, this pointer picture. It's hard to tell, but if you look at this column where it says finish, okay. Oh, yeah. It says yeah. SB5 ultra lightweight GP SB5. Okay. So there were two. There were three classes racing here oh, at the grid at the same time. Ultra lightweight novice, which is the one I was in. Okay. The prop knobs and novices are considered the same for, for class purposes. The ultra lightweight expert, which is what Jay Newton raced in, 
and then there was the Superbike 500. So there were three what are called waves, and you'll see it here in the video when I show it to you. Uh, when you grid up, it's not just one group of people. It can be, but most of the times you'll have waves. You'll have the first group, you know, eight, ten bikes. Then there's kind of a break in the grid, and then somebody will be standing in the middle of the waves with a red flag so that everybody doesn't go at once. Okay. You'll have the other wave okay. and then so on. So you know when it's your turn to go. You'll see the first wave take off after you a few seconds later, then they let you go. And that's just so that they can get the most out of the day. Okay. Right? Because you run out of daylight. So there are lots So of those lines. waves are based on qualifying time. It's, it's not each group segregated out, is it? It is. Yeah. There is no qualifying time, at least for this race. Okay. The only one that they do that, correct me if I'm wrong, is like for the Formula One. Yeah. Is where they actually do qualifying. Yeah. They stage you by your points, I think. Yeah, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, first, okay. first, first race of the season is registered date. So the first to register gets the oh. grid. After that, it's points. Oh, yeah. yeah so. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you haven't raced all season and you decide you want to come out at race seven, you're starting at the back. Yep. Yeah. Which is fine. And yeah. believe me, for me, for me, I wanted to be at the back, yeah. so yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. 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 You're not going to get over there. Yeah. The whole now shot is not a concern. Lap four. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be happy to say I did not get lapped. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Now, it was only five laps. I think if we've gone to eight, like in the heavyweights, I probably <laughs> got lapped. Um, All right. Well, I mean, since Juan came right, I'm looking at the results now, and Shane Giotano, he's not particularly slow, right? Because I know, I know him and his brother, you know, so... If you can describe your experience during that race, you were racing with people during that race, were you not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. And you'll see in the video, uh, there's a very talented young lady here, Desiree Caldwell. Yeah. Uh -oh. She must be 12, 13 years old. <laughs> they had to help her get on the bike. Oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And she was so fast, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I finally found a, a, a time where I could pass her, but she was behind me the entire time. Right just tail. ridiculously, yeah. Well, and, wow. and she's half my weight. You know, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit of a weight. Yeah. She probably weighs, you know, 70, 80 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. But incredibly talented. Steel, I mean, look yeah. out for that yeah, name. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You start doing that kind of racing at yeah, that age. Years. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to be you know, pretty awesome um, yeah. when she's a teenager. Yeah. A older. Yeah, that yeah. But you're right, Dean. You know, uh, since then, so I did a 159. Uh, the the day that I crashed, uh, I did a 156 on a track day, and my best theoretical lap was a 153. So I'm starting to potentially get up there, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't. I honestly don't think I would have gotten faster so quickly if I hadn't done these races, because it showed me. What I, what I can do because I was following people on, on the same type of bike as I had. Right, and yeah. I thought, well, shoot, if, if she can take the corner that fast, well, then I can. Yeah, you know, we're on the same bike. Yeah. And sure enough, I took the corner and I didn't crash. And I said, well, I'm going to try it again, maybe go a little bit faster. And that's how you build confidence. Yeah. I mean, you hear about yeah. people getting a toe. It's all about getting a toe. Bingo. Yeah. That's you, right. You just latch yeah. on to somebody and you'll go in harder and you'll come out quicker than you did before. And you'll crash. It's the best feeling in the world. Then you want to do it again. You can't get that on track day because it's not encouraged. That's right. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And typically, you, unless you're racing with your mate, you don't know who's in front of you. Yeah, and, and, don't know the right stuff. If you think stuff. about young girls like Desiree Colwell, the thing there is lines, right? So you said it earlier about the guy who knows his lines, so you'll get room. But the other thing to remember is, and this is the hardest thing, is when you're out on the track, once you learn the line, just keep your line. If you keep your line, you are wrapped in cotton wool. Well, yeah. Absolutely right. People get around you. And it's, it's a hard thing to do to not twitch, and, and, and that will come with time. But if you hold your line, you'll be fine. If you have to go around Yeah. I wouldn't steal any thunder. Sorry. Great points. No. Well, that's one of the things I noticed about a track day. They mark the corners, and that drives me crazy because it's so easy to start using that as your reference point. When really it's, it's like a general purpose for everybody. Well, it's I'm because thinking. it's yeah. mixed, right? Because those yeah. markers are for like level, level one, one people right. just yeah. finding their way around. Yeah. Once you are faster than that, you, you just have to learn to forget about those things. Yeah. Because yeah. the lines are going to be slightly different. Yeah. Like turning points and brake markers are going to be different. And when they're not there, though, it forces you, now yes. I have to choose a reference point. Yes. Uh, so it's a little less lazy and it's a little more focused at that yeah. point. Yeah. 
But yeah. then again, since they have to cater for like first timers, yeah, yeah. first timers like, where do I go? Yeah. Right. Uh, you need that visual cue. Yeah. So, yeah. The rest, I think. Theoretically, you could do your school Friday, Michael. Yeah. You could race Saturday, and corner work Sunday, yeah. or you could or do your school person. on Friday and race both days, Saturday and Sunday. There's probably a class for you for your bike. Yeah. For one of those, like the, the yeah. maybe the it's a twin, right, or is it a triple? Uh, it's a triple. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I have an SV650, which is like right. Oh, no. That's, that's the right That's the right That's the yeah. right that's 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 like Except the suspension is crap. Oh, right. my God. There are three things you got to spend. Uh, you yeah. talk about where to spend your money. Uh, well, we touched on it briefly. Yeah. Three you places to spend yeah, you your can money, do that. Right? Yeah. Your <laughs> suspension, your suspension, and your suspension. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everything else comes after that. Once you've got your suspension stored, yeah. that is tires, that is motor. That's, that, that, that's, yeah. the, that's the weak point on this. Because all those things that your bike does in the corner that makes you think, I can't go around at that angle, I can't go that fast. All the stuff that your bike does, your production bike does, yeah. when you get your suspension down in, doesn't do it anymore. Oh, yeah. You're on a rail. Yeah, you get on two bikes back to back, it's like, oh, wow, I didn't even feel the bump in that corner anymore that was slowing me down yeah. before. Okay. Yeah, I've had that happen. Good On job. That note. Yeah. No, Steve, you're, you're absolutely right. I would put a suspension before any other major upgrade yeah. Yeah. to a motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, just because of how bumpy our tracks are. With the exception of Coda, yeah. Yeah. which is starting to get bumpy, by the yeah. way. Yeah. 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 But, Steve, I've also heard of people taking bone stock motorcycles yeah. and, you know, being in third place or second place. Absolutely. It's just their you know, skill. Yeah. Is, is key obviously but for no people that are equipment. starting out like, like us yeah. we need to do every help we can get even if it's bone stock and you take it to one of the guys on the track and ask him to set it up for you mm -hmm. then that's the right, exactly. that's right. Yeah. you don't have yeah. to upgrade the kit just have oh yeah that, that's the other yeah. part is knowing what to do with it yes. <laughs> yeah. once you have it on there that's a dark art I don't know yeah. how to talk to somebody yep. yeah you have to go to a suspension whisperer. I've definitely been in that camp. I've watched Dave Moss videos and everything. It's like, okay. Yeah, but there's nothing like take my money. Take, 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 take my money. Take my money. Yeah, you, know. you, can, you can spend all your time fiddling with it, or you can have somebody just look at your rear tire, look at your front tire, yeah. have something down on your bike. And they go, yeah. well, they put six or seven clicks, and you go back out, well, fucking hell, I have yeah. no idea my bike could do that. You get it close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, not to get off on a tangent, but um, before my R3, I had a Ducati 749, and at Crescent, I was struggling with a lot of the left-handers, and you know, I had this wallowing feeling, like the bike would just go up and down, and I thought, man, what the hell? I tried different tires, you know, um, and you know, different lines, and finally, somebody said, go see Jim Cambora, you know, he's like the suspension mm -hmm. guru. And you're absolutely right. He, uh, I don't know if you've met Jim. He's a big guy. He says, "Well, get off the bike. Let me, let me take a look." He looks around, and then he kind of uh, crouches over it and bounces on it a, a couple times. He's, he's a like, big guy. He's a big guy. He can bottom a bike out. This <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love Joel. Yeah. He's lovely though. Uh, super nice guy though. If, if you ever have a chance, go see him. And he comes back up. And he's like, "Your chain is on too tight." It's acting oh, as your shock. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? He's like, yeah, look at it. And he bounces on it. Sure enough, the, the chain was tightening to the it's point where my, yeah. Yeah. my shock couldn't move anymore because the chain, you know, yeah. when the chassis moves, yeah. kept it from Locks doing its full uh, yeah. stroke. Um, yeah, traveling. full stroke. And I thought, okay, great. Went to the tire guy and I said, hey, can you, can you help me uh, fix my chain? This was in, in the early days when I didn't know anything about doing things myself, now I do. Yeah. And so he loosened it, I went out, the wallowing feeling went completely away, I couldn't believe it. That all this time I had been chasing this problem, <laughs> yeah. and it was a stupid chain. chain that was just so, I was tweaking the rebound, tweaking the compression, I bought a special wrench. You know, the, uh, and you changed the tires and, and put I the chain the back on too tight. I thought it was because I was on Pirelli's and they told me, yeah, the Pirelli's tend to walk on you, and <laughs> yeah. I thought, okay, well maybe that's what I'm feeling. I went to Dunlop, same thing. <laughs> so yeah. it's you're, you're spot on. Thank you for bringing that that, that up because sus suspension in this sport is probably the most important thing. It's, it's your grip. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other than the rubber on your tires, yeah. that's what keeps the bike on, on the ground and, and keeping you from falling. So okay, let's move on here. 
Uh, let me show you the video. I'm not going to show you the whole race. I just want to point out a couple of things as we go through this. Okay, so at this point, uh, let me back up a little bit. When your race is about to start, they'll do three calls. They'll do first call, you know, for Superbike 500, first call for ultra lightweight expert, uh, which is a, or uh, ultra lightweight uh, GT novice, which is the one I was doing. Uh, a few minutes later, second call. By then, you have to have all your gear on, bikes on, you know, you're, you're ready to go. Third call, that means you got to be on the track to do your sighting lap because the, the race is They're about going. to start. So at this point, they had just called the third call. And this is no different than a track day. At this point, I'm wondering, well, I feel like I'm at Bright Smart. You know, there's the Marshall waving me by. We're all just going out there. What's the big deal? You know? uh, this was first weekend. First signing. Yes. Your very first race. My very first race, and I, I was scared. I had adrenaline pumping. You know, I was just nervous. Why is everybody so angry? <laughs> make sure that nothing's changed on the track. <coughs> so what's the strategy of warming up the tires on your siding lap here? There is you nothing. Bury the throttle, no. hammer the brakes, and no. put heat in the tires. Like you have to use tire warmers. Yeah. Yeah. Tire warmers will go as fast as you can. Yeah. won't keep up the temperature. Yeah. Yeah, the siding lap is not really heating up my tires at all. Probably cooling down actually if you have more results. Exactly. <laughs> and that's why this from this point on things happen very quickly. So uh, notice the waves in front of me. Right? Those are probably the super bike five hundred or the uh, ultra lightweight oh. experts. And I knew ahead of time when I registered what my number was. So there's little numbers here on the cones, 12, 11, 10, uh -huh. and then you have left, middle, or right. So you know which little spot you're in. Are you on the left side? Are you in the middle? What's with the hands up? Yeah, let me pause that oh, for a second. Hands. You know, they, they do, um, yeah, so let me point out a couple of things. <laughs> One is knowing where the heck you're supposed to be. <laughs> Somebody's going to walk up and down the aisle and checking, okay, bike number 934, they should be in slot 13 you know, on the right. Okay, good. I've seen uh, in another race that I did, somebody was in the completely wrong spot and they made a move. And if it takes you too long, then you can't race because you're getting in the way. And, mm. Yeah. Uh, other thing to notice is between that wave and our wave, there was a, somebody with a red flag, right, saying, do not start. Furthermore, you have to raise one of your hands because you can't take off with, both, you know, either, either one. No, it's, uh, supposed off the be, it's supposed to be your left hand. Your left it's supposed hand. to be your clutch hand. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see some people have the right hand. <clears throat> this way they know that there's no way that you're going to accidentally take off. When a group in front of you takes off, yeah. Yeah. so they it's want another you to run safety. Into the marshal with a red flag. Of course, yeah. that's right. Now, way down here, and I think you'll see it as I pass by. There's some lights, like four big. They look like uh, you know, traffic lights mm. that will come on. That means you know, get ready. And then when they go off, that's when go, when you go. go. So watch as the first wave goes, and then watch the uh, the flagger, and then when we go. I'm thinking, oh man, this is awesome. This is, this is the most fun I've ever had. I know, it's awesome. The schedule's gone on the race, it's over already. The first call is gone, the schedule's gone. Yeah. Okay. How are you saying? And so at this point, I'm thinking, okay, this isn't so bad, you know. The pace is what I'm used to. It's not like I'm not left crazy. in dust. Yeah. Uh, I'm keeping up, you know, and I've got somebody, uh, well, I had somebody behind me. Yeah, here we are. That's Desi in front of me. Right. In the yellow shirt? Yeah. Okay. She's got really nice eyes. Oh, yeah. She can get her head over more. Oh, you're old. Yeah, dude. That's 
awesome. Yeah. Now the experts are oh, yeah. by diamond. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 You know, they're they're at the site. So I'm thinking, okay, I can make a pass here, save, and I'm just tucked, you know, pushing it. Ripping it. There's fire. And I thought about this, <laughs> but it was just a little bit too close. And she's going to stay behind me the entire time. And then I try to pass this guy here at the carousel, and I almost ran off. Because it came because out Because I went in hotter than Two usual, yeah. and I had so much adrenaline. Oh, yeah. I thought, okay, I'm going to take this guy right now. Well, she's <coughs> trying to take a look on you. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. And then I, my, my, uh, the tire's starting to, you know, oh, slip a little bit. Oh, we're about to blame it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so do you, do you get extra points if you wipe out a car? Most of the candy strike there, you have to stay too Oh, yeah. Good, good point. The yeah. yellow, yeah. So on the on normal That's... track days we don't have this, but this is to protect you from that wall. Yeah. So yeah. they put a little, uh, it's like uh, a bump, good. like a speed bump. Right. You so it's plastic or something day. like that? Yeah, it's like a rubber, maybe uh, about an oh, inch okay, thick. Okay. So it forces you to roll off if you're heading for that. Then to yeah, and I actually hit it. Watch watch my bike, my bike jump here. Point. Right. Yeah. That's good. And then she almost passed me right here. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. At this point, I'm thinking, all right, I gotta, I gotta catch up. And I went faster through this turn than I ever had before. Looking at the data logger afterwards, it was my fastest oh, segment. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is the part I was telling you how, when you actually race, you do things you didn't think you could do. Because I'm following this guy that's on an R3, weighs about the same as I do. Yeah. So I'm thinking yeah. I, I could go faster. Yeah. 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 This is pretty much it. I, uh, the other Stay four there. laps, I wasn't able to catch in, and Desi didn't catch me, and that's how we finished. You got a steep lean angle there. That's impressive. No, so so you, have, you have slicks on here? No, no, these are Q3s. Damn. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be amazing what I haven't sticking the toes on. I think yeah, once you get the them other hard. thing to remember from racing is, if you, and you did it, right? So you go in half without track days, and without some race experience, if you're a street rider, you're going to stand that up. You're just going to chicken out and stand that up. You probably hurt yourself more. Yeah. Whereas, try and make the corner. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to low side. Yeah, it's yeah I'd rather yeah. low side. Um, just, so then you be, and that's where it comes. You make the corner. And there's, that's, there's nothing as thrilling as being shot at without results. And making a corner you don't think you're going to make. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. You let off the brakes and just lean hard and it sticks. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Drink Drink I've been there a couple Drink times. It. <laughs> it feels really good afterwards when you go and you look at your tire and there's no chicken stripes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You're like riding that edge. We're coming up on the checkered flag here. I don't see that. So anymore. generally, how long is a race? This was a five laps race for the heavier uh, classes. It's eight nice. laps. And for endurance, what me and Steve are going to talk about, which is all other, another type of racing, it's hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. six so hours enduro or whatever. Uh, you know, I should have mentioned this. It's uh, kind of important. The, the object here is to be in first place, right? To beat everybody in your class. And endurance is to get uh, laps, right? However many laps you get, that's how you get points. It's not about who finishes first. I made a big point about my presentation. Sorry. Just here, you want a pen? You mark that. Yeah, there's a checkered flag. Yeah, you go. Awesome. There you go. And when I passed that, I just felt this immense, you know, relief. Right, so that's the thing. I did, like, yeah. the, the day it cost you 140 bucks, but how much would it cost you to have a buzz until Thursday? But what you did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, there's no question. The the this single race alone, like the very first race, to me was more exciting than a day at Coda. Um, just because of the, the rush to say I'm doing it. I'm and, it's, and it will make you do things that you won't. I mean, you want to go quicker on a track day, but you won't push it as hard as you will on the tracks. So you won't. Okay. Because you're racing. Yeah. yeah. 
And so at this point, it's just like another sighting lamp. Once they, do, they throw the checker, then you have to go around another time, but you can coast. Okay. And then it's over. Yeah, that's the thing on a Friday. If you run, like on a 250, you know, uh, if you're doing 202s on a Friday afternoon, you know you're going to go 59 on Saturday. Okay. Because right? yeah. you've got two seconds in the bag just from, just from racing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so when you sign up for your class, how much track time are you getting for like, you have I practice have sessions, right how many of those? And that's a perfect segue <laughs> for Dean Webster and Steve Wilson. I brought a stick, can I jam that in there anyway? And it's sort of like a discount yeah. for multiple yeah. classes you're going to race in. Much <laughs> jam it in the hole. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael, say that again. Are there, there like, if I sign up for five classes, is each one a fixed price or? You know, no, if I want to write my Grom in everything. You're paying by race, and then the more that you do, you get a discount. Yeah. And the, the handbook goes oh, into that. Thank you. So I think, I think you've heard this, we all did it. So uh, the reality is you don't want to go to track days until you get better at street riding. You don't want to go race until you get better at track days. You don't want to go endurance until you get better at sprinting. It's the reverse. Hmm. Just go do it. Because you will good. get better for all the reasons we've talked about. So um, the one yeah. thing I would say is get a track bike. Mm. It's, it's, it's just so much more pleasurable. Okay. Um, we're, we're now racing 250s because we're old and uh, it's cheap. I was, we, we raced SVs for many years. And I, 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 that's got a soft spot in my heart. It's, it's a big enough bike to scale to death. It's competitive. It qualifies for lots of classes. Um, and you can run endurance on that. Um, but now we run the we run the 250 class. Um, and SBs are dirty cheap too. That helps. <laughs> yeah, parts are nice and yeah. universal. So the picture on the right is, is what endurance day looks like. Um, but just to cover the points, sprints an individual event. Every round is probably 10 rounds in the season, depending. Uh, wave start, which was described by Jason. I put six laps. It depends. Goes across the line. Gets the checkers. So in 18, the minis and the ultra lightweight sprints, they ran on Saturday mornings, and the big bikes run on all day Sunday. That's a full day ticket. So the split is 500, 500 and below. Uh, it's, it's considered uh, ultra lightweight. I don't recall what the mini piece is. It's just the smaller bikes. Um, you can race up, as you said. So if you want to race a smaller bike in a bigger class, you can. Um, and most folks will try to do three or five sprints in a, in a, in a race meeting to get yeah. your money's worth and get your track time and those kind of things. But the big deal with the, the sprint race is it's a six lap sprint. So there's people doing things that you know you wouldn't normally do because they're trying to get there first, right? You've got six laps. Mm -hmm. If you get a shit start, yeah, your race is basically over, right? So that's one of the things. Sprint races, you know, how yeah. addictive they are, but at the same time, mm -hmm. they're a lot more, let's just say, can we, can we use the term competitive? Mm -hmm. yeah, lot they're lot a, bit, a bit edgier, mm -hmm. yeah, the sprints. Well, if yeah. you do get irritated, sometimes on the track you'll say, if somebody does come in a bit close, we've got six hours to go. We've got to wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, endurance on the other teams, the team events, usually four members, you probably want more than that because somebody's always sick or can't make it. Uh, everybody rides the same bike. If you have a break, you can actually pull another bike in, but your lap count goes back to zero. You've got to start again. Yeah, it's you can't break the bike, and oh. you can fix it, you pick up the laps where you left off. So if you've done 40 laps, uh, you've been rebuilt. The <laughs> yeah. 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 If you do, I've heard that it's the actual frame that counts, so you could, in yeah. theory, put in a new <laughs> engine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, you, you can take the motor out of your backup bike, depending, because I mean, if it's more than halfway, it makes no sense, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, that's what's called a frame change. So. <laughs> <laughs> they just take, the, take, take your frame and put it on the last frame. Yeah. Start at zero. You yeah, can so take the motor out of your backup bike, throw it in the bike that you actually started the endurance on, and then you don't lose your laps. But if you change yeah. your frame, uh, then yeah. you've lost your laps. Yeah, it's what's got the number on it. It's just a bell curve. Um, last season was uh, two, two sets of endurance, uh, ultra lightweight and the big bikes. Big bikes just didn't attract enough people, so they cancelled it for 2019. Um, mm -hmm. Just got more expensive. 
uh, the little bikes started as a stepping stone up to big bikes, and then people started coming back to the small bikes because, yeah. especially when you got an R three, it's uh, it's it's a great bike. I mean, it's yeah. not it's not a slow bike. Um, and people started coming back down. It's affordable. Yeah. The tires last forever. It's a bit mm -hmm. taxing. Yeah. Riding an R one for six hours straight. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's only there's only five. Uh, there's five meets per season. I don't know what the 2019 schedule is going to look like. It hasn't been. Uh, yeah, who knows what it's going to be, but yeah, the, um, yeah, but personally, this is the first year I've actually done a full season, where I'm going to make all the rounds, right, and I think you should do it at least once, once you start racing, but for me, just sprinting on the same weekends as endurance is, that's what I'm going to do next year, because it, mm. like, it, like I said before, if it's not fun, there's no point in doing it. And there's just like, you know, I, I was pleased that NOLA was canceled because it was turned into a job. Oh shit, I've got to get my bike ready, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got to get more time off work. So, you know, I think the perfect balance of, you know, doing endurance is you can endurance and sprint. It's only half the season, right? So you, it's, it's, it doesn't turn into a job. When you're still with the endurance, you still get plenty of seat time. And you will improve. You just get seat time, you're around people, you become comfortable getting past. You make a pass you wouldn't have typically made, that makes you feel good, you do it again. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to endurance. Um, there's a lot of pressure about not being the slow guy on the team, that's that's who we are, right? We all yeah. pass to the next guy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, ride with two sets of guys, right? With guys at your pace. Or just get on a, with a good bunch of guys and just be honest about your lap times. And then and then relax about your lap times. There's nothing worse than the guy in the pits always complaining about oh, I'm so slow. I'm not. Just relax, man. Yes. You know, yeah. you can have a good time. Um, four, six, or eight hours. When we started out, we probably did 30, 45 minutes. Now we, we typically do an hour. And once you get once you get into that rhythm, it doesn't it doesn't it's not as bad as it sounds. Actually, I mean, you you're worn out when you come in, but you can do it. You, if you're in good shape, you stay hydrated. You can do an hour. Yeah, the tank of fuel on a uh, on a two fifty will last about an hour and twenty minutes. So you know, I think the last round in in Hallett, um, everybody did at least an hour. And, wow. You know, hour and ten. Yeah, but I mean that's the thing. Once you you get on the bike and you look at the clock, right? Because there's a there's a clock that counts down. I think Hallett was a six hour. And uh, you'll get on the bike, and you'll see. Okay, I'm going in at four four hours and thirty minutes. And you'll look at it, and you'll only look at it for the first 10 minutes. And then when you start to get tired, that's yeah, when you'll start looking yeah. at it again. But then, you know, if, you, if you're doing it properly and you're in a rhythm, you'll go, oh shit, I'm only going to go to the 20 minutes left. You know what I mean? Cause the you're first 10 minutes take forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the clock stopped. I know the clock has stopped. Yeah, yeah because I mean, once you, you, know, you hear it on TV all the time, he's found his rhythm. You know? right. Now that's absolutely right. You find your rhythm, you find somebody like somebody will come past you, you know, he might be on a 300, I'm going to stick on that guy's, on his tail. And that's what you do. Yeah. You know, and especially when you've got that lap time, you're just like, holy shit. I just went two seconds faster than I did in my sprint this morning. That's yeah, a true yeah. story. Yeah. My advice yeah. when, you, when, when you do race, get a lap timer that is large enough that you can take one glance, because it'll yeah. cycle. And just take one glance and look at your lap times, and then you know what you're doing. To your point, you don't want to be. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That distance mm -hmm. and, and for us, being lazy, making all the rounds, you know, you drive up on the Friday, race Saturday, drink too much Saturday night, get up with a hangover, pack, drive home, yeah. no damage done. Right. Mm -hmm. so, that was a good weekend. So, so you have your team out oh, there with the pit like, board I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, paddock, the paddock after endurance, endurance racing is very different than sprint racing. Like there's more, it's a friendlier environment than the sprint racing because there's just everybody's hanging out on the pitch, as you can see. So you gotta get your canopy up, the bikes all lined up. They come in pretty much 45 minutes an hour. And depending on the size of your bike and what your strategy is, there's a, there's a ride change and a, and a refuel. But there's some stringent rules about what you can wear, uh, fire extinguishers, how you refuel. It's all pretty self-explanatory. So how do, you, how do you get, well, I guess you're with the team People, it's not like you go out there with four first timers. Like, what do you do with the fire extinguisher? There, there's enough to it. The thing about the, the thing about the track is, whatever the asshole percentage in normal life is, it's only a third of that at the track. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are people who 
you think, oh, it's a miserable bugger, what are you doing this for? Most people are just absolutely thrilled to help you. Yeah, yeah. So asking for help, what do I do with this? How does this work? You know, one in 50 will go, read the rule book, man. <laughs> the other 49 will, will not only show you how it works, they'll probably give you the one that they've got that's already made up that you have it's the same yeah, way you're doing. They'll give you the part. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Levers. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, good man. People are just, they really get it. You know, yeah. They have to race them, so they're happy to share. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a great day out. Um, I don't remember what's six. six. Six hours an hour seems like it can be extraordinarily taxing. That's, that's, a, that's a tricky track with all the elevation changes. Yeah, but to Dean's point, you get in the rhythm. Um, you can't go at sprint pace. I've done that. My very first endurance was at Hallett. And I'm passing people I didn't normally pass. I'm 10 laps in, and I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Done. Um. How do you do it like in August, you know, when it's 100 degrees and humid? You know, I do one yeah. session and, and I feel like I'm going to die when I get off the bike. <laughs> yeah, it's like my mouth is dry. Yeah, out I feel like I ran morning. a marathon. Right. Well, I mean, you know, there's many times where. You know, you'll you'll come into the pit, and I'm I'm 50, and my dad is even older, right? <laughs> so I'll come into the pit, and I literally need help getting off the bike. You know what I mean? Your legs just won't oh, yeah. work. The you know, you just yeah, it's, just, just it's amazing. Yeah. You can't stand up, but you can still ride and right. drag right. your knee. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean that's that's back in the uh, the SV days. That's back in the SV days. Yeah. Who's that? The reason I showed this was one I'm in front of him, which is always pleasurable. Uh, <laughs> Um, and I started to, I wanted to go to track days and race for three things. I wanted to get my knee down, because I didn't think I'd ever get my knee down, and I did. Yeah. Um, and you'll, so you'll learn to do that, because it's repetition. And, yeah. you, and you want to get your knee down, and then it's not a thing anymore, because it's just part of the racing. Yeah. Now, you said a thing earlier about downshifts. Right. This is where oh. um, endurance, or, or anything, downshift, breaking markers, whatever. I'm not a breaking marker guy, which is why I'm not a very fast guy. I'm sort of general. I generally break about here and I generally get on the beams. Some guys break on the same dime every time they're the fast guys. But when it's shifting, I got a new track with Dean and he raced a lot more than I and I'm saying, what gear is this? And he, he can't tell me what gear he's in because I, I watch him go. So he's counting shifts from the gear he knows he's in. So if he knows he's coming out of this in second and I'm asking him for six corners, what gear are you in? He's got to go. Right? Okay. So that, 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 this, the, the, the piece about where do I downshift just becomes automatic. Okay. Every now and again, you lose focus. Right. And you've got to kind of, for me, I've got to figure out where I'm, right, I'm in the right gear now. Then right. I go back. So it's not fourth, third. It's click, 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 click. And, right. and that just becomes automatic. And I think um, mm. there's nothing better than endurance. You're out there for an hour. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and then, you know. You're talking about analyzing this, analyzing that. We're the opposite of that. Mm. We analyze things with our arse. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just go out there, you write it, and then you, because you absolutely can overthink it, in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of people right. that, you know, are you going to concentrate on details and do this? You know, this year, um, gone faster than I ever have. I managed to crash a bike on the trailer, I had to put a new motor in it. <laughs> uh, I managed to, yeah. <laughs> Is driving. Um, <laughs> Don't leave That's a Ninja nice. 250 in gear in your trailer. Yeah. It will ruin the motor. It will it it'll ruin, it'll ruin the gearbox. Really? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, like I say, you, but I, yeah, to your point, you should practice all these things because I actually damaged my belly pan because I was putting it on the trailer and didn't have the, the ramp hooked up and spit it out. And there you go. Mm -hmm. Right? And then, you know, Lost a set of warmers this year. Why? Because I didn't unplug them. I rolled them up and walked away and went for a beer. Mm. Next thing you know, there's a fire. Oh, right? So, oh, you know, you just, so a lot of it's just self-inflicted. So yeah, to your <laughs> point, you can overthink it, but at the same time, you know. Yeah, but that stuff, mm -hmm. I'd rather overthink that when I'm back home oh, yeah. right. than oh, overthinking when I'm on yeah. track. Right. Yeah. right. But it, it will become second nature to you, but right. then you know, when you get to our age, it's like, I can't remember what you had for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, how are you going to remember all these specifics? <laughs> yeah, right. and, uh, it's a lot of questions. You, you, what you'll find is, and that's the nice thing about endurance, it's very easy to ask a teammate, how do I do this? Okay. What do you do there? And that's really what you're doing most of the time. Okay. Just a lot of questions. But, um, 
where are you getting on the gas? Where's the line? What am I looking for? You know, you're looking for a smudge this big on the track, and so you're getting that described to you. Hit yeah. that, then you're on the beans, then hit the seam, and then straighten it up. And then upshift. Yeah, and it, right. it sounds so complex here, but when, you, when you're in and doing it, and you've yeah. done it over and over again, you're looking for the thing on, on the beans and away you go. Um, but, you know, there are fast people, and they're fast from a young age. I'm, we're not, I'm not that guy, he's not guy, he's faster than me. But you will get your knee down, you will get fast. I wanted to learn to wheelie, that's not me. You won't <laughs> learn to wheelie. Now you're gonna have to do that on your own. Um, but you will learn to do that. <laughs> oh. So, I just wanna get this piece of, and this is, this, oh, to me, this is how you get better. If you, if you is get it Diamond's Edge, where is that? Uh, no. no, that's Billy, that's, that's, that's Hallett. Oh, Hallett, Hallet. yeah. so oh. I think that was coming out of the bus stop at Hallett. Ouch. But, it's, it's still safer than, than a track. Yes. Um, she's got a line, she's coming through. But I, I would encourage you, if you want to, um, I would encourage you to go to the track, I encourage you to race, and I would encourage you to get, to get a track break, because you can relax. Now, right. If anybody in this room thinks that they're not fast enough to race, that's not true. You yeah, absolutely are. To race. Yeah. No. Right now. No. You will race somebody. There, there are people out there, you're like, wow. But yeah. you're safe, you'll get faster, people know, like you get a bright yellow shirt. People can't wait to get rid of the yellow shirt. The truth of the matter is, once you get it off, you kind of miss it. Because you don't get as much room as you did with your head. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a little tighter. I'm gonna find out yeah. soon. Get me that shirt again. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, there's no rules that say, you know, if you do become a novice, you can still wear the shirt. Oh really? Mm -hmm. yeah, no. yeah, you can still wear the shirt if you, you know, because you will get, you get an extra, you get an extra six to twelve inches, yeah. you know, and like whenever yeah. I go past a, a yellow shirt, I'll pick the bike up and just give them a thumbs up behind my back, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just, it yeah. means a lot because, like you said, the ratio of dickheads is still the same, right? It's but less. it's a little bit less, less. at the track. Yeah. So, but if anybody, if anybody cuts me off, especially it pisses me off when it's morning warm up and somebody mm -hmm. takes your nose off, right? As long as you get a wave. You're okay. Yeah. Right? So. Interesting. So there's the ultra lightweight classes for sprints and endurance. It's all the same. These bikes are all on the track during the endurance. So there is some, there is some big differentials, but probably no more than a big bike. An SV versus an R1. Yeah. Um, so you can find anywhere to race. And the Kawasaki used to be the most, the 250 was the most popular because it was the cheapest, but the R3's really become the bike of choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, by a country mile, I'd say. Yeah, and now that uh, Yamaha 400's come out and that's done, that's gonna be really popular because there's like three or four of them out there now. Yeah, yeah. because you know, that that CBR 500 huge, yeah, is a pig compared to yeah. compared to that uh, that Ninja 400. But yeah, I mean, you know, and the other thing is, I'm not sure what's on your next slide, but it's, Nothing. that's it? <laughs> Yo, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you go back? Technical. I want to make a comment on, on something. Um, so notice, like where it says at the bottom, the Buell Blast, using super stock rules with air box modifications or filters. That's the level of detail sometimes that they go <laughs> in. Like they'll say, you can have a 749, but not a 749R. Okay. And so you oh, have really? to read for your bike. And what I did is I just asked. I said, look, I'm new. What, what can I race in? And yeah. one of the instructors showed me, well, you're good for this, you're good for this, you can't do this one. And then I, and then I started to pick it up. So, yeah. Okay. The club is an, uh, help you. an well, ambassador, so can, Danny Dominguez can, is the ambassador. He's, his job is to answer all the questions, right. so you'd be too embarrassed to ask anybody else. He's yeah. a great guy. Yeah, that's cool. So if your bike's illegal, you'd still race in the class, you just forfeit? Uh, you know, you... No, it's, technically, it's, unless somebody challenges you, right? Yeah. 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 You get on a, you'll be racing in super, it's changed now, because they don't differentiate between DOTs and slicks, but used to be super bike and stock were differentiated by the tires, but you'd be racing in super stock and there'd be a guy on slicks and Yeah. You can challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it, I, mean, I mean if you're racing for points, you're gonna challenge. Well yeah. If you show four weekends out of the year, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't challenge. On my and y let me tell you everybody's cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Make no mistake. They're everybody's cheating. Some way, somehow, <laughs> there's some cheating going. There's some work done on the motor. They're, they're, everybody, if you, well, if, you ain't, if you ain't cheating, you ain't racing. Uh, 
So six hundred are in the heavy bikes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I'm in the above this is on a yeah. Just a big bike. Well, big bike. So you've got uh, the D classes, which is uh, SV six fifties, EX six fifties, that type of thing. And you got the C classes, which is the six hundreds. And your 675 would drop in that category. Yeah. Mm. And then the B classes are up to 750. And then the A classes are 1,000. Yeah. So, I mean. Those B super bikes are stupid fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they're all GSXRs at that point. I mean, it used to be a. Class well, I mean, the R6 is the one that's winning everything. Yeah. yeah. Even, again, in the, the big bike classes, the R6. Yeah, because even, yeah. Like, you know, if you go to Crescent, you know, like Brandon Cleland, he used to. It doesn't matter about displacement at some point, right? Because you've got J.C. Camacho, you've got Brandon Cleland. They were winning on 600s in the Formula One race. So, you know, it doesn't matter that somebody's got a leader bike. If you can't get yeah. the power down, you know, and you can't carry the momentum through the corners. Yeah. And uh, like, like I said, and that's what the beauty of a lightweight bike is. You actually learn to keep your roll speed up all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you try and ride your lightweight bike like you do a big bike, oh, yeah. you're done. Because you've actually got to get the bike leaned over and you've got to get on the gas before the apex in order to get your drive. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, you're usually waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay, now I can give it the beam. You know, if you're not, a, you know, as soon as your knee hits the ground, you better get back on the gas or somebody's coming by you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and this is all something that seat time will teach you. I mean, I never thought, A, that I would actually be able to outride a bike. And then I also never thought that, uh, you know, I would ever race. Because that's another thing. If you don't have a supportive partner, forget about it. Right? So just make sure, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever it might be, just make sure that they are on board. Right? Because I've been, I was in the same club as you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You went so through that crisis. I did as well, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, if, if you ask me, have, you know, knock yourself out with your own one, you know. GSXR 750, but yeah, if you want to make the transition to, to racing, it's definitely a lightweight bike because mm -hmm. uh, you know you can do six hours on the Saturday, mm -hmm. right? And then, well, you could actually do your two sprints in the morning if you wanted to sprint, and then you could do endurance in the afternoon. There'll be four guys at six hours, and then you can do your practice day the following race round on the same set of tires. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we're on a big bike, oh, you yeah. know, there's some guys using. Three rears on a Sunday. Yeah, I don't you know? want to work on something at the track. I just yeah. want to ride. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the one thing when I started uh, just doing track days, nobody told me anything about tire pressures. So I went out to Grand Sport, had my beautiful 1996 Triumph Speed Triple, made sure my tires were the perfect uh, uh, pressure. Nobody told me you've got to drop them 10 pounds. <laughs> you know, sure enough, second session out. Bang my bike. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, going back to, you know, should I build a bike or should I buy a bike? Buy a bike. I bought a bike from a guy, Scott Martin. He won the championship uh, last mm -hmm. year. Gave him 1900 bucks for the bike. It's got two bands worth of suspension on it. Came with extra wheels, all the gearing I need. So yeah, if you just want to, yeah, definitely go and buy something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and pro tip, uh, after the end of season, so after next weekend, Everything mm -hmm. starts to light up in the for sale yeah. section of the oh. CMRA board. Mm -hmm. yeah. All so the race bikes. Those are the boards you looked on. I mean, I've been on Craigslist before, but yeah, you're yeah. right. It's already happened. Somebody can buy the solely the whole for sale in the last three days, two. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is the perfect time if you want to get a dedicated race bike. Go check out the MSRA. I'm, I'm sorry, CMRA. Uh, is it racing.org? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. how, how does that work? We, when you pit in at some point, because I'm going to go out there in like 10 minutes in, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah. He's like right into the pit. Again. Your turn. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, no, so, so there, I, is, there, there is a, pro the, the, there is a protocol. In. 10 laps in is going to be tough because he's not watching. And there's two of you. Yeah, exactly. So the protocol is you come past pit wall and you tap your helmet. Okay. Somebody in the pit okay. raises their hand and sees you. Okay. And you, you do two more laps. You come in on that second lap. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. Or you come in, pull your helmet off, and go, what the? And you'll be yeah. doing it. Get off the oh, rest. Oh, You're out there for an hour and five minutes. <laughs> and then somebody has to throw on another real really quick. I mean, everybody, every now and again, somebody will lose their temper. And, That's not what it is. Yeah, because you're hot and you're racing and a you know, bunch of yeah, testosterone. Man. Have you also uh, tracked your, you know, your fuel use? 
I, yeah. I'm writing out there. It's like, mm, yeah, it's how good. much is in the tank? Do I need to? <laughs> we you run out a couple times, and you know, so we, we, had, we were smart enough to have a gas gauge on, on one bike, and we pulled all the, the guts off and put a lap timer on there to wait. Uh, and then we just have to. We know that we can do two sessions. On a full two forty-five minute sessions. On a full yeah, session. it's about an hour and hour and twenty. Yeah, we know. You just get familiar. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can smell your bike. anything on there? No, it's just all time now. Yeah. Yeah. So. And unfortunately, you'll just get a couple of cups. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can only. Are we going to yeah. look at the bike? Yeah. yeah. Where do you guys want to go? Yep, we actually lost an exhaust and ran out of fuel on the same lap, I think. But, but here's the other thing. So if you find yourself with a track, just come and look for us, and we're more than happy to show you around, help you get pitted, anything you need. I mean, the whole purpose of this, the club lives by membership. Everybody at that club wants a new member, so we're, oh, yeah. we're absolutely desperate to have members. And he said members. Members. <laughs> but the the myth about everybody being fast and you're going to be embarrassed. Or yeah, it's absolutely yeah, not true. It's Just go watch one race and you'll figure that out real quick. Yeah. So the fast guys are fast, and you think oh, I'll never be that fast, but then you know you there's a lot of guys you believe in. Yeah, yeah. then there's some guys that you're attracted to now, just like, I'll use somebody who probably punch me in the face, but right. John Redford, you know, I thought, oh, he doesn't stand a chance. That guy got so fast, it was ridiculous, you know. So he just got faster than everybody else, and said, okay, I'm finished now. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah, so I mean, you, you know, I remember racing a Grom, and I saw this kid cut my nose off, and I thought, oh. He's only, you know, he's only nine. I'll just leave him alone. It's Dylan Deutschlander, right? And now he's racing Moto America. You know, oh, so. Yeah. So they're all, the top 10% are faster. They're not going to touch these guys. <laughs> but the rest of the, the, you know, the old 8020 one. Yeah. The 80. Right. Yeah. And it's fun, and uh, people are welcoming. And in every uh, racing weekend, uh, we always have endurance and sprint, or do they? Every weekend there is, it's going to be it's interesting this year, they're going to put some strange, they're going to put some different events in, but traditionally it's been small bike sprint Saturday morning and endurance of large all bike alternating. Okay. And then all day Sunday sprints. Mm -hmm. the but there be. were a few races this year, right, that didn't have endurances on them? Or a couple? Uh -huh. Yeah, the big bike, there's, they pulled the pin on big bike, I think at Crescent, it was about round six. But then they did a thing called super teams, mm. which is basically an endurance, but you get to use your own bike. So with an endurance, you know, the six hour, but then you had four different guys using their own bike. Most of the fast guys used endurance to practice. To practice, yeah. Makes sense. How, how does the, uh, the solo 30 and the solo 60 work? That's awesome. That's oh, the team, the team 60? Yeah, the team 60. Yeah, we won that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just went every round, right? You by showing up every oh, round. Oh, yeah. You just yeah, because we. I mean, there was. We did ride in the ice though. We'll we take did. some credit for that. Yeah. We rode in the ice at Crescent. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was 33 <laughs> degrees and drizzling. <laughs> oh, so it Ew. I knew. Yeah. I knew when I left the start line, and I blew the rear tire off <laughs> my 250. At the top of the last year, I knew there wasn't much. There wasn't much. There wasn't much traction. But I mean, that was the thing, you know, you're two laps in, and you're just like, oh, Jesus, I can't actually get my fingers off. To <laughs> so you had to ride around with your fingers actually on top of the brake, because there was no, I couldn't actually, get my, I couldn't actually yeah. get my fingers to the brake, so you had to leave. The team 60 event is, it's an hour-long race, two team, two-man team on their own bike. You go out and you do 30 minutes, you come in, tap yeah. the ride them. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's actually a window between 25 and 35, I think it is, and you just basically, you've got to take the transponder off the bike and then give it to the, the next guy. So that's more. That's oh, more so you're not sharing well. the same bike? You no, know, it's the team just, ah, it's 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 two guys. Guys. Hand the transponder and then I go. go. So that's what they're trying to do with the, with the big bike endurance is transition that over to a team event, so that way the big, the best guys can use their own bike for practice, which yeah. hopefully will attract more, more teams. Yeah. Just the, the, the little bike grids were growing and growing and growing. Mm. And it's cheaper. And it's okay. So how did 
for like endurance, how do you set up the bike? And then you got four different guys, in different body weights. Yeah. Just the guy that's amazing. better with the tools, yeah. whatever. Whoever has the tools and can make the adjustments. Yeah, the guy that's actually a superstar of a guy who can fix anything. I got the screwdriver, I decide the setting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you just get it close. And like I say, you know, you don't have to throw a bunch of money at it. I mean, yeah. uh, the, the bike that we won the Superstock Endurance on last year, that was. Race tech springs and emulators, and a GSXR 750 rear, uh, a, a bone stock. We had a bone yeah. stock. Yeah. 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 But and that bike carried uh, our weight differential was 205 to, this is not levered up, but 205 to probably 175. Probably. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, that setting worked for well. Yeah, nothing complained. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing you can do, Michael, is the Solo 30. That's like your own little mini endurance for an individual, right? Yeah. So you, yeah. if you wanted to do that, you could start with that if you don't have a, a team. Yeah, yet. yeah. <laughs> and then as you meet other people. Audition, an audition yeah. session. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually a, a forum in the CMRA, uh, or a, uh, a channel, I don't know what you call it, dedicated for finding teammates for endurance. Yeah. Where you can post, hey, I'm looking for somebody, or I'm available. Yeah. And, and like a matchmaking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've seen yeah. this before because you'll see ads that are that they'll they'll give their description of themselves and they'll say not a crasher. Three, three. Down the Crashing the last three rounds. Somebody's on a turkey at the moment. Oh, no. You're out, man. So, so to, answer going, your, to answer your question, sign up for the sprint. In a perfect world, it's you and a friend because it's just easier. Yeah. Um, through the sprint, you'll meet people in the paddock, and then you'll. You'll be able to find folks that you enjoy spending six hours with. That's the most important piece. Yeah. I mean, there are some guys who just ride. Yeah. But you really want to be spending. And then, and, and the nice thing about the, the, the ultra lightweight is the cast of characters that are out there. I mean, mm. it's the land of broken toys, right? Oh, there's, yeah. There's all kinds <laughs> of guys. There's fast guys and slow guys and guys who are just out there to get laps in. And, yeah. You know what, what impressed me the most is that here I am, you know, I'm 47 years old, and I was racing Desi, who is, you know, like I said, 12 or 13, and I realized this is, this is a t an ageless sport. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. can be racing with, with teenagers and have just as much fun when you're in your 50s or 60s. Yeah. The, the age doesn't really apply. Yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah. Do you want to look at the bike? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then just, you know, ridiculous stuff like, you know, zip tying the uh, little tricks. Uh, yeah, the, you know, so that way you, you the caliper stays in, in place. Yeah, it stays in place. Yeah. And if you don't want to spend it there, yeah. just right. But, uh, so, so you drill the hole. the hole through it. So you do, uh, I would recommend getting proficient at, and there's only really one way to do it, is to do it lots. But, um, Taking replacing the wheels, right? So you're going to be able, you want to, you're going to want to be able to be comfortable taking the wheels off. Mm -hmm. I hate taking my back wheel on and off. <laughs> yeah, you do it a few times and the stress is gone. I mean, you, you can do it in five minutes. What is it? You can do it in five minutes. What is that? As long as I don't have to actually change the tire. Your gearing, you change it. Yeah, you know, track. On the track. Yeah, yeah, that's another question. I, got, I'm, I can never remember, so I've always got to ask. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. The 47 seems, well, depending on what you've got on the front, but I think the 47 works for Because TWS not been there anymore. That was always a different yeah. track. Yeah. I've run a 47. I missed Hallett this time. I'm going to knock it. VTR250. The 1990 VTR 250. Classic. And it's like, uh, I think I'm stuck with the shift.